According to data from the British Council, there are now more than 1.5 billion English speakers, while 54 countries use English as their official language. In the context of globalization, knowledge of English is a must in order to become a global citizen. However, many Vietnamese people struggle to learn English. It's very hard to uh, compensate to make myself understood. Pronunciations, new words, vocabularies to organize the idea. Hello and welcome to Talk Vietnam. As you can see in the video, many Vietnamese people to struggle to use the language English comfortably. This is quite a dilemma as Vietnam is at an important phase with many FTAs coming its way. How do we deal with this? Our guest Paul Gruber, Khoa Anh Viet and Vasant Goblin might just give you the answer you're looking for. It's just these small, simple changes. But when you put them into your connected speech, you will not believe the huge impact it will have on your English, the way you sound, and how easily people will understand you. You only get tired if your reason is not big enough for you. We strongly believe that ICT really helps our students uh, to learn better. Thank you very much, guys, for joining our show today. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So let me start with you first. You are Viet. You are a lecturer mm -hmm. at the University mm -hmm. of Languages and um, International Studies. You are right. an English lecturer, right? Yes. So right. can you please share with us the most common problems associated with uh, Vietnamese students of the language English? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the Vietnamese learners have many difficulties, and to begin with. Um, in the, the Vietnamese and English is very different. But however, uh, the Vietnamese learners, um, you know, tend to use uh, Vietnamese to interfere with English, and that's what we call mother tongue interference. Um, take uh, pronunciation as an example. I have the sentence like this. I want to go to Hanoi tomorrow. And a lot of my students tend to say, I want to go to Hanoi tomorrow. And that is the Vietnamese way of speaking. And the, um, additionally, uh, we are living in the environment where um, English is not widely spoken, all right? Because English is a uh, foreign language. So that is why uh, Vietnamese learners are not exposed to everyday English. And they do not have enough opportunities to improve the knowledge and the skills of English. Great, so on that note, we have pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, Paul, are a speech language pathologist. So you've worked with a lot of ESL students. Can you please share, for your own knowledge, what are the problems with ESL students? Well, the problem is, uh, uh, you know, students work very hard on learning grammar, English grammar, English vocabulary, syntax, word order. Uh, they go to school. I know in Vietnam they go to school for so many years to learn English. The problem with that I understand from most Vietnamese is that they can have years of English education, but if you try to put them in front of an English speaker, native English speaker like myself, mm -hmm. we're unable to speak and have a, a functional conversation with them. That's the problem. Um, or if they've gotten to the point of speaking English, very often um, an English listener is unable to understand the words that are being said because the language of Vietnamese, the sound system, the vowels, the consonants are so different from the English language. And uh, as you mentioned, they use their, the rules of their mother tongue on English and it makes it unintelligible to an English listener. So that's, those are some of the problems. Uh, in the Vietnamese language, along with uh, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, a lot of a lot of other languages, your vowel system, the, the vowels are very pure, like e, 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 a, 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 o, very simple. Now, in English, some of our vowels are like that. Some of our vowels, like like sit, hit, they're very short. But many of the English vowels are two parts: up, down, a, e, i. Oh, and what that does is when you put these vowel sounds in connected speech, 
it slows down the word. You know, Vietnamese uh, speakers, when they're speaking English, that's the rhythm. That's what an English, that's what an English listener hears. But when an English speaker speaks English, it's very musical. It's da 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 da. How are you today? It's very legato. It's very connected. It's very musical. All right. So you are a neuro linguistic uh, programming expert who has worked with Vietnamese people for over the past four years. Yes, right. right. Okay. So can you sort of share your own knowledge about the problems that you've encountered the most commonly? It's like learning a skill. English is a skill. To someone who's not grown with it, it's a new skill. Maybe a little bit of difficulty there for normal people because of the wiring. The Vietnamese language wiring is different from, like you said, mm -hmm. the English wiring and Indian wiring or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're all hardwired to speak in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? And so that is the chore that becomes difficult, learning something new becomes difficult. So the thing is this, why is there a need for you to learn something new? That is what motivation is all about. If someone says you've got to learn English, why am I learning English for? Where am I going to use this? Who am I going to impress? How am I going to benefit from it? If these questions are not answered, it's a waste of time. Nobody's going to learn it. If you don't have a reason to learn it, nothing happens. It becomes a chore. If you have a dire need to learn it, and you really know what you're going to use it tomorrow for, mm -hmm. pick it up anyhow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my view. My language is not like the native speakers, so it's very hard to uh, compensate to make myself understood. I usually get difficulties in improving my communication skills because my envir learning environment lack of native speakers. I have no chance to meet them and therefore my intonation or my pronunciation still poor. Um, to Im in order to improve my English, I have to study lots of new words, vocabularies and I have to say it's not an easy thing to do. Vietnamese is quite different from English, so when I practice and brainstorm my idea in English uh, and speak in Vietnamese and then speak in English, there will be a lot of grammatical or uh, use, we're using mistakes. So what you've just seen in the clip is that one of the greatest challenges that Vietnamese people confront at the moment is the lack of knowledge and skills. Uh, let's see what Viet thinks about this. Yeah, they uh, rightly say that. But remember, it's not just the lack of English knowledge, but uh, also the lack of knowledge of other aspects as well. Even, even when you have a good knowledge of English and you don't know about the topic, so how can you express your feelings, your opinions? All right, so and remember, knowledge is one thing, but how we can express the knowledge in written and spoken language is another thing and that's what we call skills so knowledge and skills they always go together mm -hmm. how about you paul you mentioned something about function before do you share the same belief with Viet, or do you have something else to add well when it comes to function um i, I agree with what vas was saying you need to know why you're doing this uh, so many of your um your students are going through all the years of school learning english they do, they have a book, they have the, the homework, and they do the, but they don't understand, they don't, they, it didn't click with them that if they master this, if they master English, how their life can change. So um, they have to keep in mind, you know, when a, if, if that's a bottle, I'm a baby, mm -hmm. and I want to get that bottle, uh, the, ba the baby doesn't have a way mm -hmm. to, to communicate, and the mother's busy washing dishes. So the baby is forced to come up with things out of the mouth and that's lack language acquisition. That's how the baby learns m -m 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 more, m -m more, give me. That's how they do because there's such a motivator. The baby is hungry, thirsty, wants, to, wants the food and eventually learns to use words to, to complete that action. And that's the trick with English. 
The purpose of learning languages is to communicate with people. Speech language pathologist Paul Gruber claims pronunciation is a key part of learning English. And this is clear. I also want you to realize that the same R in rate is the same R at the end of clear. Visiting Vietnam for the first time, the renowned speech expert conducted several training events. No. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. I know. You know. You know. You know and I know. You hear that difference? You hear that? You hear that? Okay, good job, good job. Thank you. Em nào em em chỉ đọc là thank you thôi nhưng bây giờ em thank you. Là hoàn toàn khác ạ. À cái em tự ngưỡng này là thầy đã chỉ rõ cho em từ dream À, ước mơ ấy ạ. À, thầy có chỉ rõ là người Việt Nam thường đọc là the dream nhưng uh, đọc nếu phải đọc chuẩn là r đọc từ g dream. We listen for the sounds that are non-English and we reshape those sounds slowly. We reshape them over a couple of months and people are amazed because you make these very small changes in their speech and all of a sudden they speak completely different and they're very easy to be understood by an English speaker. Em cảm thấy rất tự tin hơn trong giao tiếp và thầy đã truyền lại cho em yêu thích sự yêu thích học tiếng Anh hơn. Each learner has their own way of studying. However, Paul's method of pronouncing clearly and correctly is to get the speakers easily understood. How about showing us your real magic? <laughs> Got something for you here. Okay. All right. So basically, what we want you to do, you said that you know, uh, we could all learn English the same way, you know, through using function. Mm -hmm. Can you demonstrate that? Sure. Uh, this is what I do. I work with clients uh, all over the world, and um, I I don't have an evaluation form or anything like that. I just give them something, and I go, so show show me what you have. Yeah, I got a dictionary. Say it again. Dictionary. It's the whole thing. I got. I got a dictionary. And what do you use it for? I use it for learning uh, vocabulary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, when was the last time you used it? The last time? Oh, it's uh, about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm listening to all the sounds you're making. You're a very good English speaker. I have to say, you're very, very good. I'm listening to your L's, your R's, your um, your I sounds. Just do this with me. This. This is your what? Say it. What is this? This is my I. Yeah. Now this is you. You're saying my I, my I, I. Now to an English, to most English um, speakers, we don't say I. We say I, you hear the little y, y at the end. I, I, why, why, shy, shy, my tie, my tie. You hear that I? Yeah. Now, um, uh, you were saying like um, the last time, the last time I used this. It's not last time. Before you get to the M, there's a Y. So listen, the last time I used it, go. The last time. There you go. <laughs> yeah, okay, dictionary ends with a Y. Here's another little trick. All words in English, this is a, a good trick. All words in English that end in a Y are a high E. So repeat this for me. Say he. He. And she. And she. And me. And me. We. We. Good. So that's the high E sound. So every word you see in English that has a Y at the end is that same thing. So listen. Dictionary. Dictionary. Right. You, you normally come down on that Y. You say, it's a dictionary. Dictionary. Yeah. And it's not clear to an English listener. It's a dictionary. It's a dictionary. And the words like quickly. Quickly. Suddenly. Suddenly. 
Yeah. Suddenly. Suddenly. Suddenly, I have a dictionary. Suddenly, I have a dictionary. Excellent. Excellent. Thank well, you so much. <laughs> Jokes aside, I want to know a bit more about your method. Uh, you mentioned how uh, you used. In, uh, you use uh, music, you incorporate music into your method. Can you tell us more about it? Well, I have a, a music background, play the piano. I wanted to be a, a, a superstar in the music business. I ended up going into a new direction. But, um, so I have a music background, and then I went back to school for speech language pathology. Um, I worked in hospitals. I've worked with um, people who've had cancer and stroke and difficulty speaking for years before I started pronunciation workshop. I created my own method with no evaluation and no phonetics, and it's more like a look, listen, and learn approach. And I use the, my musical training, the musical sound, and how I learned to play the piano and how I learned music into the, into the speech and into the speech component of language. It's a lot of ear training, and it's showing um, the ESL uh, learner and speaker, it's showing them what they're doing in comparison to what they should be doing when they're speaking English. And when they start hearing those very subtle differences and their ear picks it up and they're speaking and they're having a conversation and they say to themselves, oops, I said that wrong, I should have said it this other way. And that happens over and over again. What happens is without them thinking about it, they begin to speak clearer English, more correct English, and their confidence level in English goes way up. Taking example from the movie My Fair Lady, Paul showed how music can surprisingly help learners with their pronunciation. It's, it's like a melody, it's like music. The style of the language, Vietnamese, Korean, Chinese, the, all the, a lot of these Asian languages, the style is very tonal. So it's teaching not only the sounds of the language, but it's also the music of the language. How are you today? It's so good to see you. There's a certain style. Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merry, 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 merry. Life is but a dream. Tigers, join them. Row, row, row your boat. Nhiều lúc mình sợ học tiếng Anh quá đấy. Nhưng mà từ khi mình tiếp xúc với một những cái phương pháp của thầy, đặc biệt là những cái phương pháp mới, nó làm cho em có thêm nhiều cảm hứng. Using music in teaching English proves its effectiveness. It also makes English more interesting. As you've seen in the video, the students were practicing every vowel, every consonant, like their babies um, mimicking their parents' sounds. So, is it the problem of the mindset? Let's discover this with, with Vas. Hi Vas, uh, can you sort of tell us, is it about the mindset or what is it all about? Mindset is a perfect word, but I would suggest we use the word purpose. Mm -hmm. And we spoke about that earlier when I spoke about the motivation to learn. Motivation comes from purpose. And so now, how do you activate that in someone? You can just use words, but it's not going to work. You're going to work with the unconscious of the person. Now, when you learn something consciously, what happens? I give you an analogy, basketball, OK? Basketball and learning. Because English is a skill, just like basketball. Mm -hmm. To me, that's how it is. Now, there, were, uh, there was a research done, group A, group B, group C. They took a whole cohort of basketball players of all the, all the same standard. They divided them to A, B, and C and gave them a task. In one month, you're allowed to play basketball for an hour per day, 30 days, an hour per day. Group A was told, don't play, don't play basketball. Just stop playing basketball. Group B was told, go throw free throws, one hour per day. And group C was told, just do it in the mind. No physical basketball, no going to the court, just do it in the mind. They were taught how to do that. Mm. And the result was group A, obviously because of lack of practice, mm -hmm. they dropped in their standard. Mm -hmm. Group B improved by 20%. And group C, although they did not practice at all physically, their percentage went up to 30%. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So what happened? So that's what it's all about. NLP allows us to shorten the learning curve you know, to, to do something that you normally would take a long time. Same like Group C. 
what we need to do is to train their minds to be able to visualize mm -hmm. the language, whatever it is, the interaction with a, a, a client, mm -hmm. over and over again in the mind. And the mind does not discriminate whether you're doing it physically or mentally. And that is how NLP helps to speed up learning. NLP is rather a new project in Vietnam. However, a center in Hanoi has adopted this methodology in teaching the students and they've gained some great results. Let's check it out in the following report. Neuro, receiving information via the five senses. Linguistic, using language to give meaning at a subconscious level. Programming, organizing ideas and actions. Neuro-linguistic programming, or NLP, is a language learning method that teaches students to train their brains and motivates them to improve their behavior. Vasanth Goplan is an NLP master trainer with an NLP consultancy and trainer certification. While spending time in Vietnam, he saw that many Vietnamese students struggle with English and decided to use the NLP method to help them improve. With NLP, motivation is key. Each learner should have a clear reason to study English, even if it is simple. Tại vì là em rất thích nghe nhạc tiếng Anh, nên là em muốn là học tiếng Anh được, xong em có thể hát được nhạc tiếng Anh, hoặc là có thỉnh thoảng mà có em có thể nói chuyện được giao tiếp được với người nước ngoài đơn giản vậy thôi ạ. Em học tiếng Anh để giao tiếp với người nước ngoài ạ và có thể không cần xem phụ đề mà mình vẫn có thể hiểu được là người nước ngoài họ nói gì. Most Vietnamese students are better at grammar than other language skills. Many of them are very shy when speaking English. Mr. Vass used the NLP method to change their mindset. After learning with the new method, these students speak confidently, imbuing each word not just with its sound but also its meaning. Vâng, đây là một cách học trước của em là em học là em chỉ viết nó ra beautiful, em beautiful. Đó là xinh đẹp, xinh đẹp. Còn nhưng bây giờ khi thầy phát xuống lại em sẽ miêu tả nó ra bằng tất cả những giác quan của mình, bằng bằng cơ thể của mình và beautiful. Đó, nó sẽ cực kỳ hữu hiệu hơn là nhờ mình học một cách rất là trầm lặng và nó sẽ không có chút hiệu quả nào. NLP is not just a method to help people learn English. It can also be applied in many other areas. Most importantly, it triggers a change in attitude. According to supporters of the method, NLP generates a positive outlook, which makes a good foundation for a happy life. And luckily, it is self-created. The discipline to learn by NLP comes from each individual's will. We can communicate we can communicate not only in Vietnamese, not only in Vietnamese, but also in English. So um, the problem we have now is some Vietnamese learners of English, they want to have reached a certain level, they tend not to be able to advance further. What do you think is the reason behind this and how would you suggest to fix it? Uh, just in life, goals, visions, we all have different levels, you're a young man, and when you start out setting goals, for example, if you are sitting in the same goal-setting room with Paul, he normally would set higher goals, and you would say, no, nah, I'm too young for that, I don't think I can. So you would set goals that you would be able to stomach, you would be able to deal with, so-called realistic goals. But that realism, when you, when you achieve it, you get bored. Once you achieve a goal, you get bored. What else is there? Mm -hmm. Next level. Somebody needs to guide you thereafter to set a higher goal, to smash through that glass ceiling. We all have that glass ceiling. And so we all have these limitations. So all we need to do is to come off, set new goals right now, and then, you know, uh, and, and visualize it. Yeah. Paul, do you think that uh, his method has got some sort of connection with your method related to how um, 
you know. It's all about not fearing making mistakes. It's all mm -hmm. about not being afraid of mm -hmm. being wrong. So when I teach, um, uh, and my method includes a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. It's not just the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's body movements. It's moving hands, moving mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's yeah. all, it's mm -hmm. pulling uh, NLP yeah, yeah. into this mm -hmm. and uh, because mm -hmm. it's, it, we're all, it's all one. Mm -hmm. It's not just, we're not just a mouth here speaking English. It's mm -hmm. a whole body. Mm -hmm. And when you want to learn new mo movements and patterns of your mouth and lips, tongue, mm -hmm. jaw, mm -hmm. vocal cords, everything, mm -hmm. you want to get your whole body into That's it right. because you learn it faster and the That's movements right. and the, mm -hmm. it's all coordination. It's like swinging a golf club. That's what mm. learning correct pronunciation and good English is. Mm. It's all the coordination of our mm. articulators. Mm. Yeah. So it's using our body yeah. and learning these, right. these patterns. It's visible and physical. That's absolutely right. Yes, very important terms. Mm. Is, it, is the problem of you know, being able to, to um, speak English fluently, only, does it only apply to adults over the age of 15? Or do you think, it, is it easier for uh, young people to learn English? You know, when you know nothing, is, everything's easy. Mm -hmm. But when you know, know something, mm -hmm. you're so sure of yourself, you're already hardwired, it's difficult to change. So for a kid, uh, two years old, three years old, mm -hmm. teach them English, mm -hmm. if they know nothing else, it's so easy to teach them. They just pick it up like, like drinking sponge. water, like a like sponge. A sponge. Mm -hmm. You know, zero to seven years old is when we are in our formative years, uh, according to Maurice Massé in his research, sociologist. We are sponges, and so we take everything in, we model, we just absorb. But after that, our conscious mind is more developed, and so there's a critical factor. They choose, I want to do this, I don't want to do that. This is easy, that is difficult. So when a critical factor is developed, it becomes more, uh, becomes a chore for the person to learn. Mm. Um, I'd like to go deeper into um, environment. So what, what do you think is a kind of healthy environment that you should provide the learners of English to help them improve and develop the English better? Can you share with us? Well, I know, um, you know, I know there's a very big push by the government. There, I, from what I heard, I think they want to train about 80,000 teachers mm -hmm. to teach English because there's such a push to, for in this country for English. But I, I feel the approach is... Um, not the best, because when you look at the results, you have so many people who are book smart and academic smart in English who can pass an exam, who can get a certain score on an exam so they can get into college, but have them try to speak to an English listener and a conversation, it, it's not going anyplace. So I think the approach needs to change and the, the teaching needs to be more uh, functional, less academic, classrooms that are interactive and using English in a functional way and uh, in, in more of a natural way of how we all learn language. And I think that's what's missing here in Vietnam. Nowadays, advancements in science and technology allow teachers of English to provide lessons through various channels. Mobile apps are one of the most popular and convenient information and communication technologies or ICTs for teaching and learning English. This is a mobile app that helps young children learn reading and pronunciation as well as expand their vocabulary. Besides mobile apps, students can improve their English skills through online systems. The power of saving a specific goal. This website offers young people share their financial experience. This method has been applied widely in many institutions in Vietnam. For example, the University of Languages and International Studies, Vietnam National University in Hanoi. 
Khoa Anh Việt is the director of the University Centers for Information Technology, where the system has brought many good results. ICT has been used widely in different education institutions across the country. We use it in teaching, learning, assessment, and even research. Uh, take my university as an example. We are using the LMS, the Learning Management System, to support our training. And after receiving students' feedback and the students' study results, we strongly believe that it really helps our students uh, to learn better. The university has also applied multimedia tools and applications effectively to improve the quality of teaching and learning English. Through tools such as projectors, laptops, smartphones, and e-libraries, lectures become more vivid and attractive to students. To make, make it motivating and fun, uh, I use social media, uh, like I use Google Plus communities. Um, and it's really easy for me to get all my students uh, in that community and then I can share with them websites or resources. The application of information and communication technologies or ICTs has undeniably revolutionized the learning and teaching of the English language. With access to online English courses, students can learn at any time and place outside the classroom. Speaking of environment as well, social media at the moment is actually booming. We are living in the age of booming social media and internet and computer technology. So Viet, uh, with modern technology, what, do you, what other sort of devices, what other options do you think are available for uh, learners of the language English? Uh, well, actually, uh, at the moment, we have a lot of, um, of uh, you know, technologies available at the moment. Well, in my university, um, well, actually, the, uh, using the, the LMS at the moment, the learning management system, to support teaching and learning. And actually, at the moment, I'm, I'm teaching a course called Using ICT in Language Teaching and Learning for fourth-year students. And uh, we take advantage of the available technologies um, uh, to support our teaching and learning. And, you know, the, the Web 2.0 tools, can be a very, an excellent example of uh, of this. You know, web tool tools. It's like you know, Facebook, mm -hmm. YouTube, oh, yeah. and other interactive web tools. I'm aware that with your business, you've actually incorporated lots of modern technology into it. Can you please explain how this works? Sure. When I when I started pronunciation workshop. Uh, First of all, I never thought I'd be sitting here in Vietnam. That's the first thing. So that, that's a dream come true. But, um, you know, I created these videos, but I didn't realize the, the, way, the way the technology was going to develop. Um, I use Skype very often and also WebEx, and there's other, other uh, means to do this. But in this day and age, with high-speed broadband internet, um, at Pronunciation Workshop, we work with people all over the world. I, mean, I have clients in Moscow, Dubai. South America, Brazil, um, Italy. We just signed up with uh, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers um, movies and television. We we're working with people in Paris. And it's over Skype. And it's as if I'm sitting right, talking to you, looking you right in the face. They're looking right at me. And what's great about our training is as we're working with the individual, we're also typing words in the chat window. So the person is working with us, and they're seeing these words coming up, and we're showing them the sounds that they're missing, what they need to emphasize and stress. So it's very interactive. And then following the session, they print out that transcript. So it's very personalized. and. Um, and they practice with it and they improve very quickly. Besides technology, teachers play an essential role in students' language learning process. In Vietnam, over the last decade, much attention has been paid to training teachers of English so as to improve the quality of English teaching nationwide. In 2008, the government issued a decision 1400 implementing the National Foreign Language Project 2020, or Project 2020 for short. 
project of 2020 requires most Vietnamese students graduating from secondary and vocational schools, colleges, and universities to be able to use a foreign language confidently in their conversations, studies, and work. This is done through various training courses to improve teacher qualifications and assessment methodologies. Chưa bao giờ chúng ta có được rất nhiều cơ hội đào tạo giáo viên đến như vậy. Và thứ hai là chưa bao giờ mà rất nhiều những cái bên liên quan đã tham gia cùng vào cuộc, kể cả những cái đối tác cũng như là các chuyên gia quốc tế. Không chỉ đào tạo giáo viên ở một cấp cụ thể, mà liên tục từ các cấp tiểu học cho đến cao đẳng và đại học. Among Project 2020's various courses, the training course for English teachers with foreign elements currently underway in Hanoi, Da Nang and Ho Chi Minh City stands out for its comprehensiveness. The course involves all key English teaching personnel from schools and universities across the country. Chưa bao giờ đề án ngoại ngữ 2020 có được một cái chương trình và nó mang tính chất tổng hợp như bây giờ những khóa học trước ấy thì thường tập trung vào một cái mảng kiến thức cụ thể ví dụ như là chuyên sâu về phương pháp giảng dạy hoặc là chuyên sâu về kiểm tra đánh giá hoặc là chuyên sâu về cái mảng chính sách thế nhưng mà đây là một cái khóa học mà kéo dài và nó bao trùm tất cả những cái khía cạnh đó cùng một lúc những học viên được cử đi học thì họ được tổng hợp kiến thức như vậy thì sẽ nhìn được cả bức tranh hết sức quan trọng của việc đổi mới The course has six topics with 400 training sessions, including both online and classroom training. Training is done by both Vietnamese and international experts, covering the latest knowledge, methodologies and technology used in language training in the world. Điều mà tôi thấy rất là hay, đó là thường thì chúng ta hay bị nhầm nhầm lẫn, tức là chúng ta dạy tiếng Anh là dạy tiếng Anh. Nhưng mà ở đây thì cô cung cấp cho chúng tôi một cái kiến thức đó là chúng ta dạy tiếng Anh để làm sao đấy cho học sinh của mình có thể khám phá ra được những điều khác xung quanh và các em có thể sử dụng cái ngôn ngữ đấy trong học tập và trong công việc. Sau khóa học này chúng tôi sẽ thay đổi cái cách dạy của mình cho các em một cái công cụ để các em tiếp cận với thế giới bên ngoài. Paul mentioned earlier that uh, the Vietnamese government has approved a scheme to sort of um, improve the ability to mm. teach and, mm. and learn English for English teachers in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Mm. What, do you, what importance do you think the government sees in this? Can you share with us, seeing you're an insider? Well, actually, the, the government is fully aware of the, uh, the current situation of teaching and learning English in Vietnam. So, uh, therefore, the deci decision number 1400 and the, uh, by the pr Prime Minister and the National Foreign Languages 20 2020 project uh, were the, the vivid proof by the government to improve the quality of teaching and learning foreign languages in Vietnam. Well, as, as you said, there's actually, yeah, approximately 80,000 teachers were tested in terms of uh, language proficiency and methodology. Well, in my opinion, uh, the, um, the, pro the Project 2020 is doing a very good job. Actually, it's an incredible and unbelievable job at the moment it's because the, the task, the job is huge because it is see, across the nation. And, um, and from my perspective, the government should still uh, invest more money in this area uh, I think more language experts uh, should be sent to different schools where teachers are teaching so you know they can provide on-site you know professional mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know advice and also training as well so if you can do things like that I, I strongly believe we could, uh, we we can provide better contextualized training for teachers of English mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Vas uh, you come from Singapore yeah. and, and your former Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, yeah. he once said that if Vietnam wants to become a major player in the ASEAN region, um, English needs to be a, an important in, integral part of the curriculum. Uh, can you sort of share with us, you know, how important is it to train the trainers in English? You, when you're teaching someone who's got zero English mm. and someone who's got two out of ten English, they think it's sufficient. That's what I mean by blind lead the blind. They haven't got their pronunciation sorted out yet, and they're teaching someone. The quick fix is going on. I'm an advocate of go deep, do it right the first time. Because once the fundamentals are wrong, the, 
the anomaly is hardwired, it's so much more difficult to change. So you cannot overemphasize the need for good training for teachers, right? To get the right fundamental. So teachers need a good foundation before they get out there and say, sit down and listen to me. It's critical. Because they're teaching the wrong thing. Exactly. They're teaching the wrong things. I hear this mm. every day from my clients. Mm. I, I, I teach them to go, my teacher told me something completely different. Mm. They're, they're not, very often they're, they're teaching the wrong thing. And maybe they were taught the wrong thing and they believe that that's the correct thing, but it's not. Paul, mm -hmm. um, so this is your very first time here in Vietnam, mm -hmm. working with the Vietnamese students, and you had some interesting experience over there. Uh, can you please, you know, show us your feelings, how you feel, and um, what reception have you received from your students here? Unbelievable. From the moment I got off the plane and landed in, in at the airport at Hanoi, uh, to the events, we had some held some very large events uh, with 3,000 people in attendance. So that was the first event. Um, I'm happy to accommodate, and, but um, it's very, very exciting. It's, it's a thrill for me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everyone knows me because of my training, and um, it's just been an, an absolutely amazing time that I've had here in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and I hope to make many trips in the future and come back and, and build my training because I know it could be very powerful because your, your students and teachers would be able to not only speak English well but clearly and that they'll be able to communicate with the world in English. It's going to be the universal voice mm -hmm. of the future English and, and this way everyone will be uh, mm -hmm. on the same page understanding each other. Hey chaps, your insights have been enormously helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, through this program, we hope that you have sort of learned your own methods, your own ways to achieve success in learning the language English. Thank you for watching this edition of Talk Vietnam. I'm Michael Liu, and until next time. We made it. <laughs> we made it.